Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the second tutorial of this semester, the spring 2022. The first tutorial, if you remember, was uh, just before the midterms so that you could have a practice of problem solving uh, from the beginning of the semester till the midterm. Uh, traditionally, the second tutorial is just before the final exams. So here we solve the midterm itself and quiz 3 and quiz 4 for both the sessions so that you know the solutions and you have a good practice before the finals. We will start by uh, solving the midterm. Uh, so it will be a solution of the midterm as well as also a tutorial session where you are solving different problems. The first question is of course uh, the multiple choice question from different chapters. Most important material property for high speed civil transport is what? Temperature resistance, impact strength, hardness, all of the above. So if you remember that when there is a large civil transport carrying 300, 400 people, this is very large in size and it is traveling at speeds of sound and above high speed right mark 2 mark 3 and so on so the most important problem becomes the friction on the body with the air which generates a lot of heat so temperature resistance would be your answer metal alloys such as this are used in biomedical applications titanium alloys stainless steel cobalt alloys and all of these so if you had gone through this introduction chapter well then you will see that all the three titanium stainless steel cobalt all these alloys are used in biomedical applications so the correct answer will be all of these toughness will be high for which one high strength brittle material low strength ductile material good strength ductile material all three what do you think see high strength brittle material strength is high but it is brittle so the ductility is very small so the area under the curve is a small low strength ductile material strength is low so the height of the curve is a small ductility is good the area under the curve is still a small good strength ductile material the strength is high so the vertical side is high and the ductility is also high so the area would be largest under this one good strength ductile material so toughness will be high because toughness is the area under the stress strain curve okay curves for true stress and engineering stress are almost the same in the elastic region because what loads are large loads are small strains are large strains are small sorry for the slight mishap on the previous page uh, I was reading this question all right curves for true stress and engineering stress are almost the same in the elastic region because loads are large loads are small strains are large strains are small so if you remember right you have the stress strain diagram and one is true and the other is engineering later on in this later part the true strain curve true stress true strain curve is much higher than the other one but in the straight line region in the elastic region both curves have almost the same line we can't differentiate whether it is the true curve or the engineering curve so what is the region what is the reason not because loads are large loads are large later on not because loads are small not because strains are large strains are small strains are small when it is in the elastic region when it's in the elastic region strains are very very small so on the horizontal side there is very small distance so in that very small distance on the horizontal side the straight lines just almost 100 percent coincide so your answer is strains are small this is the reason that true stress and engineering stress curves are the same in the elastic region when reflected rays in XRD are in phase 
are in phase we get what destructive interference constructive interference reinforced beams so right they are in phase so it is not destructive it is constructive but for constructive interference there is another name called reinforced beams the two beams are reinforced by each other so the answer is ci and rb constructive interference and reinforced beams because they both mean that the light will be seen now because a strong light beam is being there it is not destroyed a dash is used for the measurement of angle of diffraction a very simple thing goniometer optical microscope x-ray diffractometer electron microscope so if you had studied your x-ray diffractometer then the small device inside the x-ray diffractometer which measures the angle of diffraction is called the goniometer right let us now move to some true false questions um, uh, and again let me emphasize that uh, in the midterms and so on there is a large question bank from which you get uh, questions so the multiple choice and the true false that we are doing here are only a few samples some uh, of the others that you may have uh, got in the exam uh, will be different high strength alloy steel is a special non ferrous metal right high strength low alloy steel is a special non ferrous metal so now you see steels are all ferrous metals so it is a very special alloy but it cannot be non ferrous so false right materials used in medical devices or in contact with biological systems are called electronic materials so even if you have not gone through the text and the book and the chapter and so on materials used in medical devices or biological systems would be biomedical materials they cannot be electronic materials right so again false hardening heat treatment increases the strength and decreases the percent elongation of a metal when you harden a material obviously the strength increases strength and hardness go together and when the material is harder then its ductility is a smaller so percent elongation is ductility so yes when you harden the material the strength increases and the ductility or the percent elongation decreases so it must be true bcc and hcp metals have close packed crystal structure so if you remember crystal structures bcc is not close packed fcc face centered cubic and hcp are close packed so what is the statement false plastic deformation changes grain shape and dislocation arrangement so yes you have if you remember plastic when you plastically deform then the shape of the grain will be changed and the dislocation arrangement will also be changed so it must be true okay very rapid cooling of metals can produce amorphous structure or metallic glass very rapid cooling of metals so this is towards the very end of the chapter where we are talking of very special materials that there is a metal there is a metal metals are always crystalline but there is a metal which will become amorphous which will become non crystalline or you also call it metallic glass right so this is a very special case and what should be the answer yes true this is the only technique that you cool the material very very rapidly so rapidly that the material does not get the time to form crystals or grains so it is an amorphous material and it is also called metallic glass we now move to the uh, numerical part of the midterm question 3 was that niobium has an atomic radius of 0.143 nanometer a density of 8.57 g per cubic centimeter 
and an atomic mass of 92.91 gram per mole determine whether it has an fcc or a bcc structure right so uh, again as i keep on reminding you that if you want to do a revision for the final also not just a solution then uh, i mean hide the solution that will come later on and just do it again as a practice so the first thing is to read the question carefully and to record the data so there is material the, the metal is niobium its atomic radius is given its density is already given and its atomic mass is given and they are asking whether it is fcc or bcc right normally uh, density would be asked but here density is already given so try to do this question again yourself take a pen pencil calculator and so on the formula sheet that you have and once you are sure that you know the solution you have correctly done it then proceed to the next slide if you are coming here then it means you have already solved it one thing is that there is more than one way to solve the problem right so uh, if you solved it in any of the correct ways then i have graded it as correct one approach is to find the density of niobium first assuming ffc fcc sorry and then assuming bcc structures and whichever of the value gives the correct value of density which is given in the problem then we know that it is that value right so this is one approach that we first assume that it is fcc for example and find the density and if the density is the same as the given one then we know it is fcc so let us assume that that niobium has an fcc structure which means that the number of equivalent atoms are 4 which means that a is equal to 4r upon root 2 or 2r upon 2r into root 2 right this is for fcc material and then use simply the density formula the standard density formula uh, and calculate the density so let us see we know that density is the number of equivalent atoms the atomic mass of niobium divided by the avogadro's number and divided by the volume right actually density is mass per unit volume so number of atoms into the mass upon avogadro number that is the mass and a cubed is the volume so this is it and for a uh, either 4r upon root 2 or 2r into root 2 so that value is there and now you just substitute you substitute 4 here for this 92.91 right uh, and uh, this 2r so 2 then the radius root 2 and avogadro's number and this density after calculation comes out to be say 9.33 g per cubic centimeter remember that when you are finding density in the standard unit then you have to convert the nanometer into centimeter so that you get not density in gram per nanometer cube but gram per centimeter cube next if you assume that niobium is bcc then we know that number of equivalent atoms is 2 this time a is equal to 4r upon root 3 and again you use the density formula so the density formula is again the same but instead of a you have 4r upon root 3 this time right 4r upon root 3 and n is now 2 4 is there r is there avogadro's number is there you just substitute everything again remember that you put the value in centimeter rather than uh, nanometer and this time it is 8.57 g per cubic centimeter which is almost exactly the value that was given in the problem statement so therefore you conclude that niobium has a bcc crystal structure bcc crystal structure if by chance you had taken you were trying bcc first you were not trying fcc then you would just immediately stop that it is bcc you don't have to find for fcc right we did fcc first so therefore we are saying that uh, solve it for bcc also because the fcc density was not right but had you tried bcc first then you would directly get the answer 